Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me again today for our noontime reflection, for our thought for the day. Wherever you are, I hope you are well, having a good day. This morning was really beautiful in Greystones. It's clouded over a little, but I think it's going to be sunny all day. Perhaps it's been sunny where you are. My daughter sent a photograph of her swimming in Hills Bay Beach this morning, and it looked absolutely beautiful. The sunrise and love creation just shows how amazing our God is. So thank you for joining me, whether you're a member of our congregation or whether you're further afield. Uh, we join together as the family that God has created us to be, brothers and sisters. Today we're going to look at another psalm, it's psalm number six. So if you've got a Bible, that would be really good to have a look at it so your eyes can see the text, see the words, see what's going on. But if you haven't got a Bible, that's okay. We'll just read it together. One of the beauties of the Psalms, and there are many, one of the beauties of the Psalms is that they help us to articulate what we really feel inside. Whatever kind of feeling we have, whatever kind of emotion, whatever kind of challenges we are going through, um, the challenges that we meet are not unique to us. They have been felt by generation after generation, and certainly by the psalmist. Today's psalm is a psalm of David. He wrote many of them, but not all of them. Um, but they help us to articulate how we feel. Some are full of joy and praise, the last number leading up to 150, are full of, you know, praise the Lord, and uh, praise him with tambourines and singing and stringed instruments, and in many ways, but praising the Lord, that's the way this, the, the, the Psalter finishes. That's a great way to finish, isn't it? By praising God. Because in a sense, we want to finish our day praising God. We want to finish our days by praising God. But that's what he wants. But today's is quite the opposite of that. Um, it's about a guy who's gone through hard times. He's completely stressed. You could maybe even say he is depressed. But I was reread it. Um, if you're feeling anything like, like that today, or you know someone who is, maybe this psalm will help you understand how you feel, or understand how another feels. Because this is a very common thing. Especially in these days, these challenging days of COVID. There are many challenges to our emotions and to our mental health. But they are not unique to us. God knows about them. And in the Psalms, we can read about them and see what the Psalmist does, what his attitude is. So let's read Psalm 6 together. And as we do, let's just keep in mind that it is helping us to articulate or someone to articulate how they really feel inside. Psalm 6 for the director of music <clears throat> with stringed instruments. Psalm of David. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am faint. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in anguish. How long, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. No one remembers you when he's dead. Who praises you from his grave? I am worn out from groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be ashamed and dismayed, they will turn back in sudden disgrace. This is God's word to us. So David is in a bad way. David often went through many pressurized situations for prolonged times. And sometimes it's because of his enemies, which maybe is to do with this, but sometimes it was just something to do with his sin. We read Psalm 51 as his reflection on that whole episode with Bathsheba and having her, her husband murdered and the, just that tragic time in his life and how he was groaning inside and hurting inside but realizing that it was against God that he had sinned 
and against God that he needed to come back to. And you know, that is one thing about however we feel, whatever we have done, however we feel in our present circumstances, whatever our hopes or our fears are for the future, whatever way we feel, the one thing we can do and the one thing that the Bible encourages us to do is to cry out to God. There's some things that we just can't fix ourselves. But the psalmist cries out to God, O Lord, he calls, O Lord, and over and over again. The scriptures encourage us, whatever we're feeling, we should not be ashamed. Fear should not hold us back, but cry out to God, for he is God and he can help. In fact, possibly he's the only one who can. Whether we have family, we have our church, we have friends, but God is a good God and wants good for you and for me. So to cry out, Peter in his first letter, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it's maybe a verse you know really well, which encourages us to cast our cares on him because he cares for you. And it's a very strong word that cast all your cares on him. It's not just a gentle bringing them to Jesus. It is, it's a hurling. It is because of these heavy weights that burden us in our mind, in our heart, in our lives. And he says, hurl them towards God for he can He's big enough and strong enough to handle them. Cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. Do you know that? Do you believe that? You might know it and not really believe it. But he does. The Bible tells us so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me loves me the bible tells me so so that's why we bring it to him and that's what david does oh lord do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath be merciful to me he begins with mercy and he ends with mercy in verse 9 because one thing david knows is that god is a god of mercy it doesn't matter what david has done he can still come to god all those things all those fears all those sins should not hold him back from coming back to his God. And in fact, that's what he asked God to do to him, to return to him. He says in verse 4, Turn, O Lord. But before that, in verse 2, look, he said, I'm faint. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are in agony. In agony. A couple of days ago, I did some squats because I thought, I need to get some fitness. Did some squats. Yesterday and today, my legs are aching. Going up and down the stairs is agony, but nothing compared to what David was talking about. This was an inward and deep agony. His bones, his bones were feeling the, the pain. My bones are in agony, but worse than that, verse 3, his soul was in anguish. The very deepest part of him, not just a physical thing, but this was a spiritual thing, a mental thing, an emotional thing. He was in anguish. And so he cries out to God, How long, O oh Lord? How long? It's just a desperate cry. When is this going to finish? When is this going to end? Maybe you feel like that today as well. Maybe you're going through something that just seems to be going on and on and on. But you, like David, can cry to the Lord. How long? He's not asking God for an answer. It is just a cry, a despairing cry. How long is this going to last, Lord? And so he prays, a beautiful prayer in verse 4. Turn, O Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. He turns to God. Why does he turn to God? Because of his knowledge about the nature and the character of God. Because, as he says, of your unfailing love. Yes, Jesus loves me. That is truth. That was David's experience. He had seen it in the past. And even though he may not have felt it at the moment, and even though he was going through such anguish and stress and depression, still he knew that he could come to the God who is a God of unfailing love. His love for you never changes. Whatever you do, whatever you think, wherever you go, he loves you with a perfect love. It will never get bigger and never get smaller. I can't because it is perfect love. It is deep and wide 
for you. His love is unfailing. And so David comes to his God because he knows his love is unfailing. And he asks God to return to him. Lord, turn to me. It's not like the ironic blessing. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord turn towards you. And that's what David is saying. Turn, O Lord. Deliver me. Help me. And then he goes on to describe, you know, all night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. That's a lot of crying, isn't it? Sometimes life can lead us to crying all night long. Our bed is soaked through with tears. His couch was ringing wet with tears. That is the extent of David's depths of depression. Verse 7, my eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Things are looking bad. Do you know, depression and stress is a thief. It wants to rob us of our joy. It wants to pull away the rug from underneath us. It wants us to think of ourselves as nothing. But that's not what Jesus does. Jesus, in John chapter 10, verse 10, says this. He talks about, well, he's really saying that um, Satan is a thief. And the things that happen in our lives, the things that he places in our minds, um, the way he accuses us and pushes us down, it is to rob us of this joy. And Jesus says the thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. But he said, I have come. Jesus had come that they may have life and have it to the full. Depression is a thief. Satan is a thief. But Jesus wants us to have life in all its fullness. So that is why we turn to him and look at the results. Verse 8. Away from me, all you who do evil. For the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. Is that how David felt? David turned to God. He cast all his cares upon him. He said, Lord, turn back to me. Help me. And with this great confidence at the end of the psalm, he said, the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. Do you know, David might not have actually felt like that when he wrote this. He couldn't have been, well, it's not as though God had spoken in the sense, I hear you, David, I hear you. But you know, David knew that he had been heard because he knew who God was. And the God who says, cast all your cares upon me is the God who is there to hear and deliver us. David was confident and we can be confident too. Even though we may not feel our prayers are getting anywhere, we can be confident that if we come to him and cast our burdens on him, he is a God who is merciful. That's what David says. You have been a God of mercy. He knew this God was a God of mercy, not a God of anger or punishment or a God who rejects us. But when we come, he's a God that's love. He's a father who just loves his children. And if you feel in any way like this, like David has felt, God loves you. That's a guarantee. And God wants you to come to him. And when you do, you can be confident that he hears you because he loves you. He's the God of unfailing love. And because of that, David was able to say in the last verse, all my enemies will be ashamed and dismayed. They will turn back in sudden disgrace. All those that are against us, or the world that seems to cave in on us. God is good. And we can be confident that he will work through this situation. And in this situation. It doesn't mean that suddenly everything in the garden is rosy. It wasn't like that for David. No, no, no. That would be too simple. Life is complex and complicated. But God is good. And God is working his purpose life in our lives if we trust in him. Ultimately, he wants us to become more and more like Jesus, who suffered many things. He went through it all the times. And in that garden before he died, he sweat, his sweat was like drops of blood. He was in deep, 
anguish. He was in agony. He could identify with how maybe you feel or someone that you know feels. But he's the God that is good. His love is unfailing. His mercies are new every morning. And you and I can be confident that he hears us. Because he loves us. Hopefully that helps you today. Life is complicated. There's no magic switch to turn things from bad to good. But it's not meant to be like that. It's a journey. But it's an adventure. An adventure with Jesus who loves us and who said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. The God who loves us and wants the best for us. He wants you to succeed. He wants you to be fruitful. He wants you to stand on him, the rock. You know you can. Make sure you do. And you'll not be disappointed. Amen. We're going to pray. Um, we're going to pray just for anyone who's maybe listening to this and is feeling like David. Oppressed. Depressed. And we're going to pray that God will shine his light into your life or their lives. Because this is our God who changes things. So, shall we pray? Let's do this. Oh Father, we come to you, our God. Lord, you're the one who made us. You're the one who knows us. And you're the one who loves us more than anyone else ever could. Father, we pray that you will hear us as we pray to you today. Lord, you are so good. Father, we thank you that you know exactly what we're thinking at this moment and what we're feeling at inside. We thank you, Lord, that nothing is hidden from you. And thank you, Lord, because of that, we can come to you confidently, for we can't hide. We simply come. You know us. You know our brokenness. You know our sinfulness. You know our strengths. Father, you know all things. And so, Father, we come. And Father, we pray especially for those who are feeling um, burdened, worried. Father, for those who have regrets of the past and fears for the future, and so are tormented in the present. But Lord, we thank you that you don't want us to be like that. You want us to live in the moment and be confident of you today. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us what we need at this moment, Lord. For those listening, give them what they need for this day. Father, we thank you that you, that you are trustworthy and faithful to us. Father, for those who really need you, we pray your blessing. We pray, Lord, that your spirit will comfort and strengthen. Father, we thank you that the way we feel is not unique to us. Many people feel like we do today, and many people have felt like that in the past. But Lord, we thank you that you are the same God yesterday and today and forever. Lord, that we can hold you by the hand. We can follow your voice. Lord, thank you for loving us so much. So let's just take a moment's quietness and bring our prayers to him, whatever we'd like to say. Whatever we'd like to say thank you for, or sorry for, or simply just to cry out to him. Let's do that in this moment's quietness together. Father, we know that we are weak, but we know that you're strong. We know that we're often without faith, but we know that you're the God who's faithful to those who love him. Father, we don't know what a day will bring, but you know the beginning from the end. So Lord, we look to you. We trust in you. 
Father, hear our prayers, we pray. And we ask this in the precious and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. So thank you for joining with me today. Maybe you can reflect on that psalm as you go throughout the day, reread it. Just see what it says to you. Pick out some key words that are for you. Uh, and be blessed through it. Um, I'm going to be away for a number of weeks, so our church service on a Sunday um, will be led by Terry Price for the next four Sundays. I'll be away for the next four Sundays. So I'm going to be going on a bit of a tour around the UK, and hopefully you'll come with me, because we're going to do Facebook Live on Wednesday, again as normal, at noon as normal, but I'll not be here. I'll not be standing against this wall, at least hopefully not. <laughs> Um, but the plan is to go a few places, and I'm going to take you with me, and we will reflect as we go. So you up for the journey? That'd be great. Terry is here again on Monday, um, as normal. Terry in a shed. Thanks to Terry for doing that. And I think that's all to say. So I'll see, I won't see you on Sunday, but there will be a service at 11am, Facebook Live, as always, from Grace Stones Presbyterian Church, and I'll be on tour next week. As I've said in the past, if there's anyone would like to contact us, contact me or our church for any reason. If you've got any, any needs that we can help you with, any questions that we can answer for you, you'll be only too happy to do that. So don't be frightened to get in touch. All our details are on our website, Grace Downs Presbyterian Church. So thank you for joining me today and until I see you again, be blessed.